All right, all right. What is going on, guys? We are back with a new career mode series and not just any standard, not just any standard career mode. Manchester United in FIFA 21 Next Gen. I took a bit of a break from playing a career mode, a manager career mode. I've been doing a player career mode on the channel. Uh, I need a break from career mode sometimes, but then, yeah, I got up today. I'm like, all right, let's go with Manchester United again. Of course, if you know, I did one when the game released on early access, actually, uh, what is now old gen. <laughs> uh, now we are on next gen Manchester United, and I missed, I missed doing a United career. So, you got a lot of money to spend with them, so I don't want to spend too much. And like usual, I like you guys to get involved, so make sure you get into the comments for the transfer action. And yeah, we'll see how all that's going to play out. But for now, let's just get right into this brand new career mode. And now we have to choose our pre-season tournament invite. Generally, I like to go for the like most money. It's pretty straightforward. Sometimes you can consider your options as well. So clearly here, European Shield and European International Cup, similar money. Then you go Championship Trophy. You could probably say you should be winning that with United. Confirms 7.6. But I always like to yeah go with the most money regardless. Even though we're not going to play through the preseason, we're going to simulate all of that, focus on transfers and get into the Premier League as quick as we can uh, to be kicking off this series. Let's go. And yep, manager gets a number one kit. Uh, don't expect him. Yeah, don't don't expect him to be showing out uh, in the number one. That's, that is given to De Gea, but you know, FIFA gets confused sometimes. And of course, guys, if you watched my career mode with Man United in the early access when I started it, you know then Cavani didn't sign yet. So I haven't played with Cavani in Manchester United this year in FIFA 21. So yeah, this is, was a reason for me to do it as well. Uh, Cavani, uh, people were wanting to see me manage Cavani in the Man United career mode, but it couldn't happen, unfortunately. And uh, now here he is. I'm excited to use him, to be honest. So let's go. And I don't have to deal with Jesse Lingard. Yes, but he started pretty well, hasn't he, at West Ham? And I like to show you guys my plans and what I do in the career. With Mesbury, we are going to loan list. And the same with any other younger players that are like below 70 overall. I like to loan list them and hopefully get them out on loan for the season and see how they progress. And Grant, nah, he, he's just transfer listed. Even though he's not going to be worth much, he's 37 years old, he's retiring at the end of the season. We, you just don't need him when you got Henderson. Henderson and De Gea, I think, will rotate. Henderson's clearly better. Romero will be like the third backup as well. Do we try and get him on the chopping block? But I guess you do need three keepers. It will be a different setup. You could say just keep Grant, try and settle Romero. Eh, I don't know. We have to see how we're going to go about that. But well, that was my initial reaction. Grant's not going to be used at all. Romero, I've, I've I've never minded Romero. I think he's a decent keeper. So it's nice to have him around. He kind of gives the vibes of my Man United career mode that I did a few years ago. And like in the past years, does anyone else feel the same? Like when Romero was at the club? Uh, I probably sold him at some point though. But yeah, it's a bit of a throwback. And with the formation, something I like to do, especially at Rashford and Greenwood, when Martial might rotate with Cavani, but I just like to push up the wingers a little bit. Uh, from a left midfield, look, Rashford suddenly got plus one as well. We moved Greenwood exactly the same. See what I just did? <laughs> See what I just did there? And not just because it would have gave him plus one, I just think it fits the team better and should be more clinical in attack and with two dms uh, should be fine on defense so it's yeah that's a good mix for me and of course we love to see what our budget is so that's what it's looking like i'd probably put a bit more i'm not going to spend that all anyway you just think that's a huge wage budget a lot of money that is a lot of money to splash but always an exciting part is a youth academy let's see let's go to the youth academy right now who have we got some decent prospects, but there's always that one, isn't there? And it looks like to be a central midfielder. Schmidt by, might be okay. Uh, I'm not going to waste time because I know. Uh, Patrice, unfortunately, keeper, he's not going to be good enough. So you've got to release him on the first day. Uh, maybe he can go find another club that's going to be his level. So release him. Schmidt is just there, though. Oscar Schmidt, French, 16 with a minimum potential of 68. Hopefully that goes up a little bit more, but Sharp, let's see. Stanley Sharp. Why did our best youth player 
Uh, really? EA? What have you done? What have you... This is a perfect... Oh, look how good he is, though. The game has flipped out because he's fantastic. Five-star skill moves. Five-star week. I can't help but laugh, man. Like, what is happening? So, hopefully, he sorts himself out. But... Realistically, like as a player, he looks absolutely incredible. Look at the attributes for a second. Solid player, isn't that right? Stanley Sharp's going to be some funny. Just a new career mode for me had to start this way. And the rest of these guys, we are going to uh, have to release. Uh, I thought, might as well leave them in. But no, they're never going to be good enough. And we're going to get some more scattered players in. Uh, probably be heading on to that next. So we do come with a four-star, four-star uh, scout. I prefer five-stars. Four star, four stars, not the worst though, but let's see if another one is a vat. This is what we, look at this, Tony Pitt. There's two right there for us, could sort us out for the career mode. Three is probably too much, you end up getting so many youth players, but Tony Pierce, yes. You think about it, maybe rejecting Harrison. So if we go like that, <laughs> I thought maybe we could have got another one. Yeah, let's go Pavo Sousa, what a name. Yeah, we're going to get him from Estonia, yes. So then with Harrison, ha we're going to be realistic. As I said, three scouts is probably going to be too much for me. And another time, even if we wanted three, we could probably get, um, yeah, another five-star, five-star. So Harrison, unfortunately, we're going to have to fire you, lad. We just had a meeting and, yeah, you don't line up with the same things I do as a manager. Uh, hopefully, you can find yourself at another job. So, uh, yeah, see you, mate. So now we will go on to that with Tony Pierce. He he's from Wales, but I think... I always love to scout England, and plus it just makes sense. I love it for the duration of a career. Uh, you just have them keep going after nine months, send him out again, and yeah, just keep it going around England, try and bring through the talents. So then Pavo, he's going to be the one to go around the world, and he'll do three months. I like to go over always, let's head over to Brazil. I always just like to see what's available. Uh, what's available in Brazil and yeah, hopefully get some pretty good young Brazilian youth players. But let's see if we do. But let's see how the current team is going to perform against Borussia Dortmund. Let's go in and sim the match. You see Jaden Sancho is there. Uh, he would be very, very expensive, even though in real life, I believe they've slashed his price a bit. So it could be possible. Uh, don't know about that, though, if it's going to happen. Let's just go to quick sim and hopefully United can get the result here. Uh, it is a 2-1, but more importantly than that as well, to get the game time into the boys. Uh, yeah, that's most important with the preseason uh, competition with the friendly matches. And Marcus Rashford. Oh, and Juan Bissaka. All of this. Look at this. Will you take a look? we got to get into all these details right now. Uh, Rashford off. For, okay, no. no. You see, man, I wasn't going to consider it anyway, but it just like extra. Uh, maybe those c release... Cl yeah, you got to take a look at the release clauses, though. Uh, block. No. <laughs> Man City just made it an extra no. And three weeks. Okay, that just covers the preseason. We'll sort that. But then it also brings an instant conversation. What if this happens during the season? You go, okay, let's go swap with a right back. Who's available? Uh, Williams is probably going to have to be trained over on the right side again. Uh, I remember doing that. I remember doing that, so that's probably the target. Uh, right now, though, I don't know. United probably needs someone stronger. Uh, Williams, 75. Okay, maybe that's that's not bad for a youngster, and we'll train him up. Maybe we don't need to go for a, a signing. Juan Basak is always going to be starting when he's not injured anyway, and we're not rotating. And just so I can show you, this is what we're going to do with Williams. You go over RT to the position, right back, so it can also suit his preferred right foot as well. That's how we're going to develop the young lad. Oh, will you look at this? Transfer offer for Phil Jones. Oh, the FIFA gods are shot. I'm like, yeah, take him. Take him, lads. we got a huge budget. We're not going to worry about trying to negotiate that and risk it not going through. Uh, catch you later, Phil. So another preseason match here. Benfica expecting a win this time. You know, it's not a bad team, but that that's... I can see improvements that already need to be made in this Man United team. So, as I said, you guys got to get up in the comments for some. I don't want to make too many unrealistic moves and, yeah, bring in players you might not want. So, we're just going to quick sim that and let's see. Let's see. It's a 1-0. It's Luke Shaw actually scoring. 
And this is pretty fitting here. You can see what I'll be heading towards, but Phil Jones, yeah, the deal goes through. Just the, such a relief uh, for him to go through. And this man, Nikola Milinkovic, he's only rated at a 75 overall, but he's a rumoured signing right now for Manchester United, looking like to make it happen uh, with a lot of competition to sign up a Meccano and even in FIFA as well. It's just the, too much of a go-to signing these days. Uh, would be someone a bit different, Nikola Milinkovic. And with dynamic potential, we play him a lot. And if he plays well, he can definitely get better. Uh, he's 22. So yeah, he can still grow, has a bit of potential in him. So yeah, he wouldn't be a bad move at all and realistic. So let's get into the transfer. And I mean, will you take a look at this? He's six foot five. He's got the high defensive work rate. Look, he's got right back as well. We talked about right back. What we just said there, high defensive work rate. He wouldn't be an attacking type, but later in the game when we need to defend or something, he would be perfect. Literally a perfect signing. Uh, one that is rumored, heavily rumored as well. So uh, yeah, this looks very good. He's not going to be too expensive. You're like, you got a huge budget. You can go for the absolute best, but I don't like to always do that. Like This is a... Touch it on a few times. It's a realistic option, so I like to go for that. Let's bring in Nicola to Manchester United. Let's make it happen. So here are the managers to hopefully negotiate a successful deal. We're going to sit down and let's see. We're going to go with a transfer fee. Initially, we're going to go 10 million. We'll go 10 million, which is reasonable, 500k above his current value for a 22 year old that has still a lot of growth in him. So, yeah, that's going to surely go up. 10 million will be a great deal. What are they thinking? Oh, really happy. I'm, I'm exceptionally happy with that. Uh, basically, around his value, where, as I said, at his age, he's going to keep growing and keep getting better. We just have to see what he wants on the wage. Here's going to be our second negotiation. Let's see. Let's see what he's wanting. As we sit down, we sit down with his agent, and this is a good place to start. We're discussing his role at the club, Nikola Milinkovic. Right now, I'd say rotation, and I think he would be willing to accept that. Yep, he's good. He, he's all good. He's all good with that deal. So any further four-year contract for a 22-year-old, not going to argue with that. Yeah, it looks like we're agreeing. On that side, on that side of things, weren't looking. Yep, no release clauses. I like to stay without them myself, and that just reminded me. I'll offer contracts to players with like release clauses already at the club, just to get rid of them. So we're going to accept that. We won't. We won't want to be like having to sell a player that we didn't want to. Uh, if they, if a team gets their release clause, so the wage and compare what he's currently on right now. That is really not. You know, I'm not going to argue with that. We're just going to accept it. Uh, because we've got so much money to splash and I'm not about risking. Yeah, you never know. You never know they could reject things. Really happy with getting the deal done. And, you know, a pretty cheap fee. So let's go. Uh, new center back. He's still, we're not going to, yeah. Uh, okay, we'll talk about it. Jaden Sancho. You could say there's money to splash. But no, that's not going to be realistic as well. Because I say splash, the price has been slashed in real life. So we're not going to go there. Unless that happens in the career mode, we can get him for a cheaper fee. That's, yeah, too much for one player. So there you go, Milinkovic. He gets given that number four now. That's his 10 million. Yeah, sounds like a good signing right there. So let's just go and click onto for the details. We'll have to go over to the club news. And there is Milinkovic, the new number four. The manager, exceptionally, exceptionally happy for that signature. And now as manager... Like we said, he's a 75 overall at the same time. So right now, he is not hes not one of the better players, not one of the better defenders, but you've got to look at his attributes. 85, really, really strong strength he has. That's so important when defending and build up, train him on his, you know, tackling, slide tackle, standing tackle, get that into the 80s. And with his strength, he's going to be a physical beast. He's going to be able to just push off the strikers, the attackers. And yeah, we're going to have to just... Move around, move around some players to get him in. Lindelof, very average himself. And I reckon Maguire, Harry Maguire, you got to get behind Harry Maguire. He's got that quality in him. He's an 82, 82. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, memes about him and all that. But if we talk about his quality, you look at those standard attributes, like those are really good. Those are really good attributes for me to work with as a manager and 
to go with Milinkovic. So those are two very strong center backs. And like we touched on for Milinkovic to be growing, we'll play him in a lot of games and he'll push forward. What I mean by push forward is his ability. Uh, hopefully he won't be pushing forward too much on the pitch. We want him to be staying back. But I like the look of that. And we'll just see how this next game plays out as well against Sevilla. We'll go to Quick Sim. Looking at their side, I think Man United, no, not strong enough. Unfortunately, Williams getting a goal and just they couldn't push. They couldn't push for that final, that final goal that would have been a winner in that match. So that means United still make it to the semi-finals. As I said, we'll be listing players for loan. We get some tournament prize money, extra money. We don't really need it too much, but uh, we got an offer from like Leicester for Axel. Uh, I don't have him listed. I got all these offers for, or I didn't get any offers for players I did have loan listed. That happens. But Dylan Levitt, he needs a bit more growth in him. He's actually at least 1 million value, 1.1 to be exact. So that's not too bad. Reading would be a good move for him. Hopefully he does get regular football. So let's just see. Yeah, let's see how the rest of the competition goes here. If we go through a quick sim, some players are looking tired. Oh, we wouldn't want more injuries. I think we have to be smart. Be smart as a manager here. We got to you got to take of Greenwood. Even Martial doesn't have right mid in his position. This is just to rotate. Keep in mind, but he's actually still going plus one. So uh, that's not the worst. And is he back? Wan Bissaka is not back. See, this is the trouble. This is the trouble. Who would you rotate? As I said, new signing Milinkovic is still minus two, but he's got right back in his positions. In my opinion, he shouldn't be going negative uh, because of that. But yeah, uh, we are going to put uh, Eric in instead, Eric Bailly, and also Telus, just so you guys can get a bit of, not just you guys, but the lads, <laughs> they can get a bit of a rest and you can see if United will get a result. Can they win? Oh, penalty shootout, a bit of a flip of the coin. Uh, unlucky, especially in a game where they dominated possession. Not, not a bad preseason at all. Not a bad preseason. So that means next up is Premier League games. That's the next next matches up, but it's a good amount of time. It's a good amount of time, and that's where we're going to leave this for this first episode. We made our signing. We made one, but it was fairly affordable. A lot of money to spend. I want to see where you want me, where you guys want me to take this season. Do you want me to leave it at that? Don't really worry about the money we have. Play with the team plus Milinkovic. Essentially, we just swap <laughs> Milinkovic uh, for yeah Phil Jones. Got Phil Jones out. Milinkovic, realistic signing. So let me know what I should be doing with that money. It is a lot of money to spend. But as I did say before, I didn't want to go too unrealistic and just splash on the biggest name, try and go splash the whole budget on Jaden Sancho. they all been done before. So I want, I want to know how you guys want this career to go. But importantly, I need to get some of my own expectations for my players. Edinson Cavani, I'm going to set him a target of scoring 20 goals in all competitions. I was thinking in the league, but we've got a lot of games and that's something he should be able to achieve. But considering we're going to have rotations, he's 33, can't play every single game. But I'm going to rely on him in a lot of games, especially in the league, long league season. Edison Cavani, I'm going to want him to be scoring 20 in all competitions. We'll be keeping track of that. And there's no disputing that Bruno Fernandes is, you know, the key player in the team. So we're not just looking for assists from him, but just to have big games, having big games for the club. I'm going to want him to have 10 games this season where he's going to be the player of the match. So hopefully Bruno will step up to his top level because sometimes he can play a lot of balls and he won't end up getting credit for the goal, but he'll set them up. So yeah, or getting the final ball, which would mean he gets the assist. So I just really feel Bruno, he's going to control games for us and we're going to need that. We will need that from our best player. So we want to want to have him, want to have him 10 man of the matches and maybe a little lenient, maybe pushing towards 15, but we didn't go we didn't want to go overs for this season and we'll definitely yeah, we're going to keep track of those things. And if you guys have any expectations, these are the managers expectations from the fans. What do the fans want from any individual players? If you can get that in the comments for this episode, that will be absolutely fantastic. 
fantastic. And I will forward that to the players and let them know what they want. And also your expectations from me slash the team, Manchester United, what we will be achieving, wanting to achieve for the season. For now, we are going to leave it there, though. Stay tuned for the very next episode. <laughs>